Hi everybody, this is Mr. Nolan, uh, and I just want to uh, run through really quickly with you what we did uh, today in class. This will be a really short video. Um, what I want to uh, kind of clue you in about is um, the methods that we started to look at for our juncos. So our central question is, you know, why are these populations different? Um, and so, you know, what we've been moving toward is we see that there's behavior differences in juncos. We see that there's juncos that will, on, at the UCSD campus, will let people get very close, whereas the mountain juncos won't really do that. They're much more skittish. They're going to fly away uh, sooner. So um, our question now is, do juncos just learn to be bolder, or is their behavior something that they inherited? So <clears throat> when we say bolder, we mean the birds will let people get closer. So the UCSD birds are bolder, right? We know that. Um, but what we want to know, is it inherited, like by, by genes? Is that what's involved? Or are they learning to be bolder? Uh, so in order to um, participate fully in this lesson, maybe if you weren't here today, what you're going to need are your student activity sheets, uh, which uh, start if from this file, they're on page 80, but it says lesson 12, do the Juncos learn to be bolder? Is their behavior something they inherited? So that's where you're going to need to be. Um, you're also going to need access to this video. Uh, this is the link right here. It's also in the information portion of this video. Uh, so you can click on it. I only want you to watch these about three minutes between 11.23 and 14.11. Only watch that, uh, and then you'll, you will be able to answer uh, some questions. So the point of today was to start to really consider what kind of investigation can we do in order to figure out uh, if the birds are born with this trait or if they learn it. Um, I just want to call your attention to earlier when we looked at the bee study, we saw these scouts and non-scouts, and the researchers found that the scouts were actually chemically different. Their brains were built differently than the non-scouts. So the scouts really don't have the choice in the matter. Uh, they are scouts, whether they like it or not, they don't learn anything. They're, they're just sort of, they have chemicals that tell them to be scouts. Likewise, non-scouts have chemicals that tell them to be non-scouts. Um, we're wondering, is the same true in our birds? Uh, are there basically chemicals that are just telling them uh, you know, be be a, a, a bold bird or be a timid bird. So what I'd like you to do before we do anything else, <clears throat> jump to your uh, student uh, activity sheets right here where it says lesson 12, and I want you to respond to these two questions. Connect to the previous lesson, what behavioral differences did we notice between mountain and city juncos, and then predict. Do you think that those traits are inherited or learned? So if you weren't here today and you haven't done this, please pause the video at this moment and respond to these two prompts. So don't go any further until you have done that, at least in your head. Okay, now that you've responded to those prompts, uh, what you might remember is that uh, city juncos have less um, aggressive behaviors. Uh, they are also much better fathers. Uh, the males are, and they'll let you get a lot closer, right? Those are some of the things that we that we talked about. Now, you might take the position that those things are, they're born with that, or you might take the position that they are learned. Um, generally today, the, the general consensus tended to be that we think that those traits are actually learned, that the, the birds are learning this either over the course of their lifetimes or they're learning it from their parents or other birds. That's just what our, where our discussion tended to lead. So what you're going to be able to do today uh, is to look at the results of, of the study and look at what the methods are and figure out, well, is this true or not? Uh, are, are the birds learning this or is it something that's that's born? So before we go any further, now that you've answered some of those warm-up questions, I want you to go to this video and I want you to watch uh, 1123 through 1411. So please do that right now if you haven't already. Uh, and so after that, uh, I'll point out something I'd like you to read and some questions that I would like you to go ahead and do. Okay, so now that you've watched that video, I want you to see um, where you should be looking in your student activity sheets. So we were just here. This is what we did a moment ago. There's a reading <clears throat> that I would like you to please do. So the portion of the video that you just watched, they point, they mentioned uh, what's called the common garden uh, experiment and, and what that means. Now the common garden experiment was originally used on plants, which is why it's called common garden. 
Um, but you can adapt it to almost any organism you want. Just go ahead and take juveniles from two different populations or more and put them in the same environment and see are those traits something that's they're born with, genetic, or will they cancel each other out? Uh, if, if you don't find any differences between those individuals that are born in the, that are raised in the common garden, what that means is that there's actually uh, no genetic difference. If you find that they are uh, living different lives, if they are actually behaving and, and developing differently in that space, that means that there are genetic differences. So what I'd like you to do right now is go ahead and read this uh, portion of the methods section. It's uh, in page 81 on this file. Uh, so please read this. It's a little bit complicated, but just do your best uh, to, to try to figure out what did this uh, methods actually look like. And then read excerpt 2 that says how they actually conducted the experiment with the juncos. Um, so please do that before you go any further. Heck, you could even just read it right on the screen if you would like to. Um, but uh, read that before we go any further, um, and uh, I'll tell you what to do next. Okay, now that you have read this, uh, this little, these excerpts from the actual study, um, what you might have found was that they, they took these two groups of birds, uh, they, um, the, the mountain birds and then the uh, the city birds, they housed them separately, and then they basically stuck them one at a time into a new room, right, a novel situation. And they observed them to see how they behaved. Uh, so they would put a, a, a junco that had UCSD parents into this enclosure and watch how bold it was. And then they would take another junco from uh, the, with mountain parents, put him in, and then see how that bird behaves. And so what this means is that the birds are young enough that no learning has occurred, at least nothing meaningful. So if we put these birds in and we observe how bold they are, that's going to tell us whether or not those traits were inherited or not. So once you have read this little excerpt, um, what we're going to do is we're going to move ahead a little bit. And there's some questions in your student activity packet that say, making sense of part one. How does this experiment intend to compare the two populations of juncos? Not why. We already know why. We want to figure out if these behaviors are genetic or if they're learned. Um, so how does it seek to do that? And then what steps in the methods provide for a fair comparison? Uh, what that means is what are specific parts of the methods that the researchers are using to make sure that nothing is interfering uh, with these two populations. The only thing we want to try to figure out is, is this trait uh, genetic? And so what are some fair, com you know, uh, portions that, that make this a fair comparison? So respond to these questions in writing, please, just so you can get a, se a sense for thinking about that. And then I'll po point your direction to the other pages. All right, now here is the fun part. So earlier uh, in this activity, what you did was you made a prediction. You predicted, are these differences in behavior between the populations inherited or learned? General consensus was that they are learned. What I'm going to have you do now is uh, you can either look at it right on your screen or you can pop open your student activity sheets. But this right over here on the right side are the results of the Common Garden study. On the left are the results that we already saw. You can find these on a previous video or in, your, uh, in a handout that I gave you. So what we already saw was that uh, the um, UCSD campus birds, which are indicated by the black columns, will let you get way closer, almost three times closer, before they fly away. The Mount Laguna birds won't let you get anywhere near as close. You have to get, you know, 13 or so meters close to them, and then they will fly away. Um, female situation is a little different because they're guarding their eggs, but what we see here is that, yeah, definitely what we see what we've seen before. You already saw this graph that you can get really close to a UCSD bird. And that was the, the uh, uh, responding variable here was flight distance. How close do you have to get for them to fly away? Over here, these are the results of our common, uh, common garden study. Now, in order to understand what this is showing, you absolutely have to read the axis. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. You will get the wrong answers. So what we see here is that they're reporting things similarly. The San Diego birds are in black and the Mount Laguna birds are in gray. However, they're not reporting the same thing. What they're reporting, instead of the, the distance, how close do you have to get to scare them away, they're reporting a measure of what's called exploratory behavior score. Uh, this is another way of saying that if the score is higher, that means that the birds are more bold. If it's lower, it means that the birds are more timid. They're sort of marked against a sort of average. Um, so this is, this is what this axis is showing, is how bold is the bird.
Now, keeping in mind what we talked about earlier in this video, what is meant by bold, uh, you should be able to look at this graph and interpret, well, how were these birds responding to this novel environment, this new kind of scary situation that they're in? We've got our UCSD birds and our, and our Mount Laguna birds, right, which are in gray. Um, and we also notice that there's differences between males and females. We can talk a little bit more about that later. That's not really the, the point of, of what we're doing right now. So look at this graph, try to interpret what is it showing, and then answer these questions. There's these three questions with lines that I'd really like you to respond to um, in terms of, of this, you know, the results of this study. This is what we already know. This is what we found out in our gar common garden study. So please respond to these questions. And then on Friday, when you come back into class, uh, we will discuss these. We're going to talk about what did we learn uh, from, from the results that we found in this study. So please go ahead and do that. Make sure that you are ready by Friday to come in and talk about those. I also want you to discuss these things. We'll talk a little bit more about these, um, but uh, you know, start putting some thought toward these next steps. You don't really have to write anything, but at least have some ideas here for our next steps. So uh, what I wanted to do in this video was just kind of give you uh, the resources you need in order to look at the results from the study and start to answer the question, are these uh, traits um, innate, are they born with these traits or are they learned? So please make sure that you do those things before Friday and I will see you then where we will have a nice discussion about uh, these traits in our juncos. See you then.